Humans have been fishing for tens of thousands of years. At first, we fished only to fulfill our own needs, and so we would use the odd spear or hook to catch fish from land. But as human society started to develop, the population grew and our technology improved. We took to the seas, we used bigger and faster boats, and more efficient gear. Fish did not only become a source of food for millions, but also a source of financial gain, as we traded and exported it. Soon the question began to arise. Is it possible that we could one day run out of fish? This question was dismissed by English biologist Thomas Henry Huxley in 1883. He said, Probably all the great sea fisheries are inexhaustible. That is to say that nothing we do seriously affects the number of the fish. Many people at the time agreed with him, and if I'm honest, I probably would have too. After all, how could we possibly have expected that human actions could one day empty the vast unexplored oceans of their fish? Yet, as the years went by and our fishing activities became more intense, we started to see some changes. Where there had once been diverse communities of fish, the biggest individuals, which were favored by the fishers, started to disappear, until only the smallest remained. In areas of high fishing activity, entire fish populations began to disappear altogether. In 2017, it was estimated that 34% of all such populations had disappeared due to overfishing. Now you could ask yourself, so what? What does this decrease in fish numbers really mean beyond the fact that it proves an eminent 19th century biologist wrong? Perhaps the most obvious concern is the one for humans. Less fish in the oceans plus a growing population equals, well, I'll let you do the math. But the problem of overfishing has also raised some worrying concerns about the natural world itself. For starters, our fishing activities have caused biodiversity to decrease. The Yangtze River's iconic giant Chinese paddlefish has recently been declared extinct, and overfishing played a role. But it's not the only one. WWF recently announced that 80 freshwater fish species have been declared extinct so far. And that's just freshwater fish. But perhaps surprisingly, fish aren't the only victims of overfishing. Some fishing practices involve fairly destructive methods. For example, some fisheries drag nets across the ocean floor, which not only pick up anything that lives there, but also flatten or rip out anything that grows there. Other fisheries use explosives to kill fish, and, well, I probably don't need to explain why that one might be destructive. Beyond these direct impacts of our fishing activities on fish and other organisms, there are also many indirect consequences that might not be easily detectable at first glance. Let's take an example. Coral reefs are incredibly rich ecosystems. Not only is the diversity of multicolored corals incredibly beautiful to see, but these reefs house no less than a third of all marine species, which makes them important as well as beautiful. There are many species of fish living in coral reefs, and in fact most of them have their part to play in that ecosystem. One group in particular, the herbivores, are crucial to the survival of the reef. By munching on the algae that grows on or around corals, they make sure that coral reefs stay true to their name and remain dominated by corals. But reef fish are often a popular target of fishing activity. In several areas around the world, the disappearance of herbivorous fish from coral reefs has caused dramatic changes to the ecosystem. With the fish gone, the algae, now unbridled, start to overgrow and dominate the corals, causing them to die off. And an algae-dominated reef, well, it just doesn't support as much life as coral reefs do. Now, this is just one example of how overfishing can have some domino-like effects on a range of living things. I could give you more, but I think you get the picture. You may be thinking, well, thank you for depressing us, but is there anything that can be done to solve this problem? The answer is probably yes. Several methods have been put forward over the years, and they include setting catch limits on fishing activities, restricting the use of certain types of gear, or creating marine reserves where fishing is prohibited and fish are allowed to recover. One such reserve in Mexico proved to be very successful in replenishing fish populations. A movement of consumer awareness has also recently emerged, in which people make active choices about the sustainability of their food. There is still a ways to go, but the success stories do exist. Only humans can change what humans have done. Perhaps the sustainability of our fisheries is a goal that we can aim for and achieve together.